We're here in beautiful Beijing, China, and behind me, we have the American brand Buick Electric Mi 5. This just became available in China in 2024. It will be available in America. And I'm very excited to do a review on it because this is Buick's first electric car. Now, 2009, Buick GM, the parent company, went bankrupt. So they stopped all sales in all regions except for China and America. 2015, we have the cars like the LaCrosse, and we also have a GL8 Chinese Special, which is an MPV. Those cars left a deep impression on the Chinese market because, and they sold over a million units each in 2015 through 2019. The LaCrosse left a very deep impression in the Chinese market because of its soft suspension, the American couch feel of the cushions, which customers really appreciated and liked. But since 2019, the sales figures have de been declining and Buick was relatively slow in the market to come to an electric vehicle. Now, due to this, they have suffered a little bit in sales, but to remedy this, they have the Electra E5, which we are trying out today. Now, will the Electra E5 be able to bring Buick back? We'll see. It uses the Ultium EV platform, which is also used in the Lyric as well as the Hummer EV, both cars which are priced significantly above the Electra E5. The Electra E5 is 4.9 meters long, or just about a fist longer than the Model Y from Tesla. It has a 68 kilowatt battery, which will give you a range of 545 kilometers and does zero to 100 kilometers in 7.6 seconds. It also has an 80 kilowatt version, which is the 620 kilometer range. The Electra E5 is priced competitively and around the same price range as the Tesla Model Y. In China, we'll run you 208,900 RMB. Uh, the high-end model is 239,900 CNY. The all-wheel drive, which will come onto the market later, maybe this year or next, is 278,900 CNY. Buick has been a brand that I have most closely associated with cars for old people, cars that look fairly generic, but this is not your grandmother's SUV. This car has some sleek, unique styling and very low profile headlights that give it a pretty aggressive front. The grille is closed and I think overall this car looks really, really good. The version that we have today has 20 inch rims and the low end version has 18 and overall I think they look really good. Um, the other thing that is interesting is you swipe the key to get into the car. This will open it up for you. All right. And the charging port right here is push. There it is, opens, and then you just push to close. Everything about the Electra E5 gives me this feel of a modern SUV. Of course, the styling across the back, you need the brake lights here, it goes all the way across, a feature in many modern EVs, and the Buick 3 logo here, you have a mirror of that here with three brake lights at the top. You have an electronic uh, rear view mirror, so when you're driving, you wanna see something behind you, this will give you a very clear picture. The interior of the Electra E5 does well on a couple of counts. One of the things I really like about the Electra E5 is that all of the AC controls are right here on the dash. I like having the buttons here so that I can change things immediately. There's also a volume control knob here. It looks good. The other thing, there are quite a few buttons on the steering wheel and those are both intuitive, simple to use. They are normal buttons, not those uh, haptic feedback buttons that I tend to hate. Uh, the gear shift, um, you need to pull it in and then you are able to uh, adjust things. So other than those things um, on the door here, you have quite a few buttons, uh, your lock, unlock, of course, and your seat adjustments here and back support adjustment right here. The cabin space is one of the places where the Electra E5 really shines. So I have the driver's seat right now in the same position that I would have when I was driving. I'm 5'11 or 178 centimeters tall. This seat is well placed for me to sit very comfortably behind the driver. The trunk space has an impressive 500 liters of space. So if you wanna take all of your gear and go for a day trip or go car camping, you'd have room for four people and all their gear. And that is definitely fantastic. Fold the seats down, you have 1,600 liters of space. So the first thing you notice when you're driving the Electra E5 is of course the smooth ride and the lack of noise coming in from outside. The next thing you notice is this large 12 inch HUD, which is one of the largest in EVs. It is very informative and also 
also adjustable. So right now I have it in the map view. You can also change it to song lyrics or just keep it minimal with the speed that you're driving and the gear. Like most EVs, this does have an autonomous driving feature uh, that is called Super Cruise and it has not been released yet. Uh, and the Super Cruise system works with a warning light system on the steering wheel but uh, we don't get to test it because it has not been released uh, in China yet. Some of the features inside the infotainment screen, currently they are using uh, Apple CarPlay, which I think is fantastic. They don't force you to use their own ecosystem. Many other EV cars force you to use their entire ecosystem for, I feel like it's a little pushy. There is a button on the steering wheel that changes the view behind the steering wheel, and that will make it ultra simple and also uh, make your entire map view or whichever one you want to look at or song lyrics or whatever's going on in the car. The sound system in the Electra E5 is tuned by Bose and it only has 14 speakers. That being said, thus far, it is the best sound system that I've heard in an EV thus far. It really delivers bass and it does really well across treble as well. So as for the things that we like and didn't like, one of the things that we didn't like was the card swiping system. All right, so I was in the car with the car ready to go and I opened the door while it was in park. So the car thinks the car is completely off and now I have to turn the car back on. All right, now the car is on. Hey, how hard would it have been to put a sensor right there in the mid console? The other thing that we didn't like was, I think this is something that a lot of Buicks suffer from is there's simply nothing about the car that is absolutely fantastic, save one thing. This car does a really good job of looking beautiful. Buick finally made something with some verve. I am very excited to say that because overall, Buicks are a car that I have a lot of memories of. My grandparents drove them. So I'm really happy to say they made something that looks like a young person can drive it. The other two things I like is, of course, the mid console buttons and overall the buttons on the steering wheel. There's things to interact with there, and that is something that I like because being able to adjust things without having to go into the touch screen, I think is very convenient. The other thing that I like was when you're riding, the ride is both really soft and the outside noise is appropriately muted, particularly for a car in this price range.